Um, I want to talk about some of the things. And I just think we need to maybe change the direction of the camera, facing it outward this way, because we need to keep the cycle lanes clear. The police will be coming around telling us to move. So we've, 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 got to, we've got to keep the cycle lanes clear, guys, or the police come around and tell us to move. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, yeah, if you stand that side, you stand... Yeah, so let me just grab this camera and put it here. I don't know, I don't know about the focus or anything like that. So what I want to talk about today are, are what laws we can put in place to defeat Islamists. Right now, we have a situation in France where there has been the beheading of a teacher in France because that teacher showed the Charlie Hebdo cartoons to a classroom of people. And a Muslim killed a teacher and decapitated them. And they did this because they are inspired by a prophet who called for the assassination of those, of those who insulted him. Muhammad called for their assassination. And Muslims are following a well-established principle in Sharia law, which is that if you insult the Prophet, you suffer the consequences. One of the terrorists uh, that recently attacked because of the Charlie Hebdo reprints connected to the trial of the original Charlie Hebdo attacks uh, a few years ago, his father said, I would gladly sacrifice all my sons for the honor of the Prophet. And our liberal governments are incapable and unwilling to tackle the Islamist problem. And they are unwilling and unable to tackle the Islamist problem because of their liberal ideology. Their liberal ideology confuses religious identity with ethnic identity. And so they equate criticizing Islam or standing up to Islamization or standing up to Islamic principles or beliefs as some kind of prejudice equivalent to racism. Now I want to put it on the record that I am against all forms of racism. I am against those that use racist language in a pejorative sense to anyone. I've heard Christians in the park confuse Islamists with everyday Muslims. And there are many on the right wing of politics who make the same error. Muslims sit across a spectrum. There are those that are Muslim in name only. There are those that are only culturally Muslim. There are those who are liberally Muslim. There are those who are conservatively Muslim. There are those who are traditionally Muslim. And then there are those who are radically Muslim. Those who are radically Muslim are the ones who take their faith the serious, the most serious. They are the ones that seek to imitate their prophet in the closest way. The very word radical means to go to the root, to return to first principles. And our liberal state, because of a weak liberal ideology, is powerless to stand up against this Islamist ideology because the liberals cannot see the problem and they have enshrined in law attitudes and beliefs that tie their hands in the struggle against the Islamists. So the first thing that we need to do in the West to stop the death of a thousand cuts that our civilization is undergoing right now is to cut ourselves off from liberal ideology and to rediscover a matrix and a paradigm of being Western, of being European, that is connected to Christianity, that is connected to a muscular Christian faith, the kind of muscular Christian faith that has defeated the Islamists before on more than one occasion. And from that paradigm, from that matrix of being human, 
from that way of following Jesus, we can then begin to introduce new kinds of laws that can deal with the Islamists more effectively than the liberals who have allowed those Islamists to spread their poison in our society and has led to the deaths of, of thousands of people across America, Australia, New Zealand, England, France, Spain, Germany. There is a reason why Poland and Serbia and Ukraine don't have a problem with Islamists. It's because they don't have big Muslim populations. So we need to introduce laws that effectively tackle the source of the problem. Because the Muslim community, though largely innocent of the crimes of the Islamist, serve as the lake and the river through which the Islamists swim through. Bro, can you take your conversation? So, guys, what we need to do is we need to wash our hands of liberal weakness, embrace with a pride and a confidence and a solidity of soul a Christian identity and a Christian culture, and then produce laws accordingly. So let me give you some laws that we could introduce to tackle the Islamist problem across Western Europe. Firstly, reintroduce the law of banishment to expel someone from the realm, to kick someone out of the country, to de-citizenize those who are Islamists, take away the passport of Anjum Chowdhury and make him a person non grata in the UK, a person unwelcome in the UK and do the same with all of his little group and all of his followers. Take away their citizenship, remove them from the idea of being Britain, cast them out of the country with no right of return. Yes, that breaks international law, but who cares? The institutions upholding international law are themselves morally bankrupt. So let's just tear up the treaty that says that we can't de-citizenize Anjum Chowdhury and his ilk. The second law that we need to introduce. One second. Bloodfire, Bloodfire, could you take this conversation that way? Please, could you? Thank you, thank you. So the second law, the second law that we need to introduce is the law of the outlaw. The law of the outlaw. What is an outlaw? An outlaw, when we think of it culturally as a cowboy, they were never outlaws. An outlaw is when someone is declared to be outside of the protection of the law. That their life becomes forfeit. Their property becomes forfeit. Everything they own becomes forfeit. Up for grabs. Anyone can do anything to them that they like with no consequence. We should introduce the concept of the outlaw back into European civilization and declare the Islamists, Anjum Chowdhury and his ilk, to be outlaws, which means that you can do anything to them and the police and the courts won't touch you. With those two laws, the British people, the French people, the Spanish people and the German people will deal with the Islamists within five years. That's what we'll do. We need to get tough with the Islamists because the Liberals can't get tough with Islamists. Because the Liberals are bound to concepts and ideas that make them weak. But we as Christians are not. The answer that we are looking for is the rediscovery of our Christian identity. So reject liberalism, embrace an impassioned, empowered, confident, strong Christian identity, pass laws accordingly and destroy the Islamist movements 
by creating the socio-economic and political realities that would make their very survival in Europe impossible. Any questions? I speak on behalf of a growing number of Christians that are tired of the failures of people like you. What percentage of Christians would you say you speak for? Those Christians who believe in a muscular Christianity. Those Christians who believe that Christians shouldn't be doormats. Those Christians who believe that it's time to start standing up for our brothers and sisters. Those Christians who believe that it's time to start standing up for Islamists. Standing up against Islamists. And what does this kind of heckler stand for? Nothing. He stands for nothing. This kind of moral virtuing hypocrisy that we see by liberal progressives like him are the very reason why Anjum Chowdhury and his ilk are able to kill children in stadiums in Manchester. This man is the very reason, and his ilk, the very reason why Islamists have taken root in the Muslim community. The way to defeat Islamists is to stand up to them, not to cower to them. And too many of us have been cowering to them because we believe in a liberal progressive nonsense. We believe in the ideas of a liberal culture that is killing itself, ladies and gentlemen. Now, any other questions? Standing up for Any Jesus. other questions? Standing up for Jesus. You're already standing Sorry? What about knife crack? So the question. So the question is. The question is. And I'm going to ask you all to spread out. Because the police will come and shut me down if I don't. So please spread out. Spread out. Please. No one's close to So. You're, you're next to one another. So the question is. Are there worse things in our society than Islam? It's a good question. Because, ladies and gentlemen, those on the right of politics that talk about Islamization are silent about sexualization that abuses children. They're silent about, they're silent about the kind of liberalization that creates a kind of economy that drives people into poverty. They're silent about the many other kinds of isms that are destroying our society, like rampant divorce and the destruction of the family, like abortion. Christians, we have to offer a better culture to all of these things. You can rant about Islamization, but you need to rant, you need to stand up against liberalization. You've got to stand up against sexualization. You've got to offer a culture that is life giving, not life taking. And right now, we have a culture that is life taking. Any other questions? Jesus was a bastard, he didn't have a proper father. Any other questions? Okay, so in that case, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk about a different topic.